Hi folks, Technivorous here. Welcome to my Kira playlist. Before we get started, hit that subscribe button so you can find your way back here. I update often. That said, as you may have noticed, Kira settings can be very simple or very in-depth. So I took the time to make a video about each section in the custom settings menu, and I'm going to quickly go over the important settings each section contains and briefly explain them. Are you ready? Good. Let's go. This is Kira settings in five minutes or less. The next setting we are going to go over is the build plate adhesion. So there are a couple of settings in here as well, but the main one that you need to pay attention to is the build plate adhesion type. And there are four of them. If you select none, you are going to print the model basically as you're going to, you see it here. It's going to heat up and immediately start printing the nozzle. The skirt here, I can show you in preview mode, will print a perimeter line around it, and you can see this skirt has a line count of three, which means there are three lines. You can clearly see them defined in the preview mode here, and that is basically to purge the nozzle and clean any filament or blobs or gobs that are there and to make sure that your adhesion is working properly. You can also change to a brim, which is basically a skirt, except it goes all the way up to the model and touches it which will help hold down corners of models that are lifting up and things like that. And if it'll slice here, it should. Sometimes it throws an error if you just move your model a little bit and then hit slice again, it will slice it no problem as demonstrated here. And you can see that it now has this perimeter line all the way around it. And here we're looking at the brim line count. If I were to count these individual lines, I would bet my bottom dollar that there is 20 lines there. So uh, that's basically how that works. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you can see that that is just the bottom layer that is printing those lines. In the next layer, it is not printing anything on top of them. And I'm showing you that to illustrate the difference between a brim and a raft. Now, when we slice it with a raft, it's gonna take a little bit longer because it's gonna put a couple of layers underneath there. Basically, a raft is a brim that is not quite a brim. It's not attached to the model itself, but it does go underneath the model and it is a few layers thick. Now this basically does the same thing that a brim does. It will use a little more plastic because it does do a few layers, but it ensures a nice flat surface on the bottom and it does a really good job of keeping corners from peeling up as well. Now, depending on which you select, there are a ton of other settings in here. As I said in stock Kira, most of these aren't gonna show up unless you go into the settings here and pretty much click every single one. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend turning them on one at a time and playing around with them. That's how you get familiar and learn them, but I don't recommend turning them all on and playing around because you will simply not know what you changed. So one at a time, baby steps. We will go over most of this stuff when we get into the different types and actually covering these. But as a basic overview, I'll tell you what I do. If I'm printing something that is usually round objects, you don't get lifting in the corners. Uh, skirts fine there, or even no adhesion if you have a purge line already in your start G code, which I do on my Ender 3. If I'm printing something that is square or that has a lot of corners or a lot of pokey edges that are touching the build plate, I will use at least a brim. If it is a large print, you're going to want to use at least a brim, if not a raft, simply to ensure that your print goes down properly and you don't begin to have lifting edges as the temperatures in the room change. So you don't want to get 12 hours into a print and have a corner start lifting up and then have to start all over. So it's good practice to use at least a brim, if not a raft for larger prints. Now, a lot of people don't use rafts anymore. I like them a lot because they are simpler to separate than the brim. The brim you have to cut off, the raft you can simply pop it off. But depending on the quality of your raft, it can leave you with a little bit more cleanup work to do and you might have to get out the sander anyway. So if you can get away with printing without adhesion, uh, the more power to you. But as I said, I definitely recommend at least brimming it if it is a larger or longer print. As always, this channel is brought to you by the Spine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com/technivorous. 
That's gonna be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it from my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a Technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.